Question number 13. Okay. Diagram not accurately drawn. And that's therefore a reason because students think they're smarty pants <coughs> in the exam. They get their protractors and start measuring the angle. And they think they've done anything. MashaAllah. Alhamdulillah. They've done it. It's done in two seconds. Huh? Okay, yes, we have a Okay. Okay, let's read the information on the bottom. I'm going to read it out to you because it's probably at the bottom of the video. The diagram shows a square and four regular pentagons. A square. Okay, a square is a regular shape. All sides are the same length, all angles are the same. It's a very special. It's a regular shape. And it has four regular pentagons, and the word regular is used again now. So, regular pentagons again, what does that mean? That all the lengths are exactly the same, all the internal angles are the same. So, there's not only a regular one. So look at the size of angle mark test. How many questions is this worth? Three marks. Three marks. Three. Okay, right. Now, what do we know? Angles around that point add up to? 360. 360. Angles around a point, around a point, add up to 360. Come on girls, in the back, on. Sat down. Add up to 360. Now, we should have some nice, we have some free, we should know something straight away. What is the angle in the corner of a square? That angle is? 90. 90. Okay, which angle don't we know at the moment? We don't know this, the angle which is the internal angle of a pentagon. The internal angle of a pentagon. I'll just call that P for the moment, the pentagon one. Okay, what do we know? We know if we go all the way around here, if we go all the way around, that should give us an answer of 360. So let's form a small equation. So we can say the pentagon angle, P the internal angle of pentagon, plus the other internal angle of pentagon, plus the 90 degrees of the square, plus the X that they given us outside, all of that will add up to 360. Okay, now. If we simplify that down a bit, so that gives you 2p at 90 and x is equal to 360 degrees. Okay, now we need to work out the internal angle of a pentagon. How do we work out the internal angle of a pentagon? What is the easiest way to work out the internal angle of a pentagon? Now, so let's have a look at this pentagon here. Here you go. So I'm going to now extend this line here. Oops, let me bend it. Okay, this here is called the internal angle of pentagon, pentagon internal. And this one is the pentagon external. What do these two angles add up to? 180. 180. Now, how do we work out the external one? Quick way of working the external one is what? So the pentagon external angle is equal to 360 degrees divided by the number of sides. How many sides does a pentagon have? Five. So we can do now. The external angle of the pentagon is equal to 360 divided by five. Okay. 360 divided by 5 is? 72. 72 degrees. So we now know that this outside one is equal to what? 72. 72. If the outside one is 72, then that means the inside one will have to be? 72. No, no. That's the inside of 180. 108. That inside one will be? 108. So now, by looking at the separate one and concentrating here, we've managed to work out that the, the, the pentagon internal angle will equal 100 and? Two. Two. Oh, pardon me, 108. Eight, yeah. Because these two must add up together to give you 180. Yeah. So that's going to be 108. So this one here is going to be 108. And this one here is going to be 108. P's are. So we can replace the P with 108. Eight. Okay, now, have you got this part here down? Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, someone need to rub it off now. Otherwise I'm going to start crashing into it. Okay, alright. Let's put that in. Okay, 306 add x is 360. What's x equal to? 54. Opposite add 306 is? Minus. Minus it. So 360 minus 306 will give us an answer of? 54. Mr. Saf is in the road today. You've been to MSL today. Speaking some glitches. Okay, well done. Okay, lovely. Done. Okay.
Okay. Okay then. So that question there it is worth how many marks? It's amazing. Actually, this one actually worth three marks, but we've done much more work than the previous one. That's worth four or five marks. It's much, much more work here than you're thinking. Done? Yeah? How many happy with that? Okay, folks, it's going to be a bit difficult for me to do this question all the way on one go because it only shows this much at the same time and then the bottom tables over there and stuff. So I'm going to need some of your help to give me some of the numbers and stuff. Okay? Or what we can do, we can, we can, uh, we can improvise. Okay, let's improvise today. Okay, at the moment, the other tables below, you can't get everything on, on the screen at the same time. So I'm going to improvise on this original table and add on the column called... Cumulative frequency. Okay, for those of you who are following this question at home, folks, the question looks something like this. We have the table at the top and then another table and you can't get everything on the, on the board at the same time. So I'm copying up this cumulative frequency up here so we can work in one place on the board, alright? So please uh, bear with me for the moment. <coughs> so we have to we can ignore this bottom part today. Alright. Are you ready folks? Yeah. The group frequency table. Okay. The group frequency table shows information about the weekly wages of 80 factory workers. So Umar, so when I'm gonna add them all them up, what should they add up to? Should I add up to 80, yeah? So let's start off. If you want to do cumulative frequency, remise remind what community frequency is. Uh, it is called a running total. 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 So the total so far each time. Yeah. So what's the first total here? It means the first eight. total is? Eight. eight. And then what do we do then? Add 15 onto it. Add 15 onto that. Eight, add 15. Now, folks, make sure you give me the right answer now, yeah? 23. 23. And then what do we do with 23? B? Add 30. Add D? 30. So 23, add 30 will give us? 53. 53. Yeah, and then 53, what do we do to it? 72. Okay, Mr. Zish, are you happy with that? Yeah. yeah. Come on. 53 add the 70 will give us now? 70. 70. And then the 70, then we're going to add the 7. And that gives us? 77. And then 77 add the last number. Add 3 will give us? 80. Are we happy with 80 now, yeah? So we have reached the number that gave us in the beginning of the question. Let's complete the community frequency table. We've done the community frequency table. Okay, then it says here. Question part B, which we can't see on the board at the moment. I'll read it out to you. On the grid opposite, draw a cumulative frequency graph for your table. That's worth two marks. And then you want to find out the interquartile range. And then there's another question. For the next part, we will we'll have to move everything up and rub it all off and use the values from one of the papers. Okay, right. We need to do a draw the graph. Now, before we go into the graph, the graph has a cumulative frequency running along here, which is the, which axis is the cumulative frequency? That's called the, which axis is it? Y. Y axis. Now, in the original graph here, we've got Y axis from 0 to 80, cumulative frequency. On the bottom, we've got the weekly wage, 0, 100, 200, 300, 400, from now. In the weekly wage, we have here, Omar, 100 to 200, so which one do I plot? The beginning one, the middle one, or the end value? End value. End value. Lovely. And that will then be, what will that be called? That will be called the x value, x axis values. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna circle it here. That, we're gonna plot those along the x axis. So the height of 8, okay, Ifra, the height of 8, we're gonna plot it, uh, we're gonna go 200 along the x and then 8 along the y. This one, 300 along the x and then 23 along the y. So these are my x coordinate, y coordinate, x coordinate, y coordinate, x coordinate, y coordinate, x, y, x, y. Are you happy with that? Here, folks, I'm going to have to rub all this off now. Okay, because I'll move the graph up here because I can't get everything on, on the board at the same time. So, may you understand that? And then you'll have to give me those values back to me. Now, I'll put them on the board. One, two, three, four, two. Oh, so if I put it in the wrong place, can you see the...
Obviously, but this is what we see on the bottom. Okay. Lovely. Right. Okay, now. So we've got 200 and we've got to go to a height of. What's the height for 200? Eight. Eight. 200 and we'll go to eight. Okay, folks, can you start plotting on yours? I'm trying to do the best one because it's a bit difficult for me to see here exactly what's going on. 200 is eight. There it is. Okay, have you got that in? Yeah. Okay, the next one is 300 is 23. Yeah. So 20 is. Yeah. And 20. Wow, this is getting my eyes. You see, it's the river. Okay, next one is 400 is what? 53. 53. 53. No, I actually can't tell. Use the ruler. Did you draw them up back there? No. Shut up. Shh. Okay, if that can be, please, Peter. Okay. Okay, which one have I just, I've done 500, is that 400 one, yeah? Yeah. 500 is 70. Okay, folks, the lines are going to be like really approximate because I'm really struggling with uh, actually seeing the scale because you have to just make it so small for the moment. And the next one, 600 is 77. Okay. Right, 77 is going to be 600 from here, 7 up from there. 71, 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, the lines are approximately there. And what's the 701? 701 is 80. So that's 7. Okay, and then we'll go over here. 7, 8, 9, 10. So mine is roughly here. Okay, right, I've got my points on there. I'll keep them there. I'll keep them there. Okay, now, what do we need to do now? We need to draw a nice curve. Okay. So our cumulative frequency is our first value to the last value. Right, now let's have a look. Use your graph to find an estimate for the interquartile range. Interquartile range, as it suggests, is in quarters. We have 80 values in total. If we divide 80 into quarters, what's the first quarter? 20. And the second one is? 40. And the third one is? 60. So how do we do that? 80 divided by 4 is 20. Divided 20 add another 20 is the next quarter, and the next quarter, and the next quarter. So this is the first, that's quarter way up. That's halfway up. That's three quarters of the way up, and that's the full. Okay, that's all the that data. Now, to do the interquartile range, you've got to look at the lower quartile and the okay. and the third quarter. So what we need to do now, we need to use our ruler to go across, down, to guess the value, go across and down. So let's do that now, folks. Do that with your rulers. Now remember, these themselves, this the lower quarter value is actually here. Okay, so the quarter of the data went up, you go across, hit the graph. So this here is actually the lower quarter. Okay.
Okay, right, back to the question uh, from here over here. So what we said before, so a quarter of the way up, across, and down, that gives you the lower quarter value. Three quarters of the data up, a 60th value, across and down, that gives you the upper quartile. So these are not the lower and upper quartiles, the lower quartiles here and upper quartiles here. So let's get some values off the graph. So I'm getting roughly on my one here, according to my scale, I'm getting roughly 290. What the f Okay. Is this part? I'm done. Is this part on the actual video? I'm working now. It is, but it's a bit dark. Okay, so I'll come over here. Yeah. <coughs> so the upper quartile. So the we just said that's two ninety, roughly from my graph. The upper quartile. I'm looking at this now. Uh, four hundred, four hundred and ten, four hundred and twenty, roughly. Okay, right, so 420 minus 290 will give us an answer of, well that gives an answer of, <coughs> come on folks, what's 420 over 290? 150. 130. Okay, 130. 130 is, is, the, is the answer to my particular graph that I've drawn the accuracy of my graph. Now the mark scheme for this particular question Okay, let's get a quick sample of answers. Let me know what you got for yours. I got 440 minus 290. Okay, so what's, what's your final answer then? Uh, 150. 150, that's okay as well. That's lovely. 150. Samir, what do you get for yours? What's your value? 150. Umar? Same as yours. Same as mine. Uh, Mr. Zishan, what do you get? 150. 150. Okay, now, the mark scheme, the examiner will allow an answer here between from 120 to 160. So is everybody in that range? Okay, so anybody's in that range, they're in, got the mark. Okay, now, next question. Question D, so again, I'm going to read it out from here. He says, use your graph to find an estimate for the number of workers with a weekly wage of more than 530. More than 530. Okay, what I'm going to do for this part of the question, I'm going to rub off these three quarters and one quarter again for this, this part of the question. Alright, this is going to confuse things a bit. So let's, we don't need this anymore now. That's done. That. Okay, that as well. So I've done that as 130, my answer. I'll get rid of this. Because I need the space and I need to get rid of all the clutter. Let fire more than 530. Let's get my ruler. More than 530 pounds. So where's 530 pounds, folks? 530 pounds is roughly where? 73 and five. Okay. Right, can you find 530 on the bottom, please, yeah. folks, and draw lines nicely up? Until you meet the line. That's right, until you meet the line. Okay, folks, uh, get front of feet at the back. I hope you are focusing on the question at hand. Okay, mine's here is roughly. What was, what was that? What's the third value there? What was that? 70? Um, 70. Is that 70? Yeah, bang on, was it? Yeah, that one is it? 70, yeah. 70. So mine's a good, that's 70. 70, about 72 roughly, approximately 72 according to my kind of That's difficult right. graph. Okay, how many data values were all together? 18. 18. So that's the total, and we have got here, and the question says, use your graph to find an estimate for the number of workers with a weekly wage of more than 530, which basically means all the workers which are here, which corresponds to all the number of people which are here. So more than 530. So do you take 72 away from 80? That's right. 80, take away 72. Which is 8. So we get 8 workers. Right. I get 8 workers according to the numbers that I've got for my graph. Now, the lowest number for that answer the examiner will accept is 6 and the maximum is 9 for that. So as long as you're not less than 6 and more than 9, you'll, you'll still be, for, uh, be able to get the answer. So the examiner has some leeway for your answers. Because everybody's graph won't be exactly the same as the person going to be a little bit out. So, the answer to part D, sorry, was uh, eight workers. Done. Okay, is there any more to that question? No. Right, folks, are we ready? I was right, 8.2. So, this is actually question number 16. 
Just question number 16 has been chopped off from the corner, so I'll just put it over there. Okay, Mr. Rebees, are you happy number 16? Ready? Yeah. 8.2 times by 10 to the 5. Let's copy down the 8.2 over here. Okay, now, time by 10 to the 5. Okay, what does that mean, time by 10 to the 5? Yeah, add 5 zeros. We take it, add 5 okay. That's close. We don't add 5 zeros in this situation, otherwise it's like the same answer. We have to move the decimal point 5 places to the right. Because in a sense what we're doing, we're multiplying 8.2 by 10 5 times. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Drop the decimal point here. Now what we do now is we copy down. So Ramiz, 8, 2, what do we put in the empty gap? 0. In the other empty gap? 0, 0, 0. And then dot 0. Okay, so at the moment, 8.2 times by 10 to the 5 gives us this answer. Do we need to keep the decimal point at the end? Do we need it there? No. For the first part is okay, but for the final answer, we can get rid of it. So that is the number done. Next question, part B. Am I ready for the next one? Write note point note 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 376 in standard form. Now, to get standard form, standard form is a times by 10 to the power of n, where a is the number between 1 and 10. So to make this number between 1 and 10, I have to move that decimal point from here to here. And that will give me my a value. So what is my a value then? So if I put the decimal point there, and I move from there to there, what will it read now, the, that number? The number will now read what? 3.76. Excellent. 3.76. Now, time by 10 to the power of n, now we have to put in the instructions here in the power to tell us how to get back to the original number. If the decimal point moves from here to here, to get it back, what do we do? We go 1, 2, 3, we move 4 to the left, so that n will be minus 4. Okay? So 3.76 times by 10 to the power of minus 4 will reconstruct the, our original number, which was 0 0.0003 something. Yeah? Done. That question is done. Okay, next question. Work out the value of this. Give your answer in standard form. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to rub this stuff off here now, folks, and move that question up. Are you ready to move it up? So look at the value of 2.3 times by 10 to 12 divided by 4.6 times by 10 to 3. Most students will look at this in the examination and get, get frightened because they think, oh, well, how do I do that without a calculator? So most of the students' lives are revol revolve around calculators. All right, let's see how we do that. Can somebody tell me what the sign here is? Divide. divide. Another way of writing divide is by putting a sign. I'm just going to rewrite the question because I'd like to see it in this form. Okay. Right. We're going to do this question in two parts. Here's the first part. Okay. Mr. Hamza, 2.3, that line means divide by 4.6. What's 2.3 divided by 4.6? 1.3. I was thinking it's going to be more like 0.5. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, because that's, that's double of that when you divide something. Yeah? yeah. yeah. 2.3 divided by 4.6 is 0 0.5. Here comes the next part. What's 10 to the 12 divided by 10 to the 3? That will give you what? 10 to the 9. 10 to the power of 9. Now, when we divide them, these numbers are the same. We have minus the indices 12, minus 3 is 9. That's good. Okay, the question says, give your answer in standard form. And what do most students do? They get to this place and what do they say? Yes, I've finished my answer. I'm ready for the next question. Have you finished? No. 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 Because this number is not between 1 and 10. Standard form, the first one is between 1 and 10. So at the moment, from here, how many times do we jump to the right? Nine. Nine. But the decimal point doesn't shouldn't be here, the decimal point should be there. So we have five point note time by ten. If I move the decimal point one place forward, I won't jump nine places my answer. Eight. I'll jump only eight. eight places. You don't need the point note as well, by the way. So that divided by that gives you 0.5. That divided by that gives you ten to the nine. 
but then you have to adjust it to make it into proper standard form. So that gives you find the answer 5 times by 10 to the 8. And that's the end of that question. And all together, those will work, work 4 marks in total. This method is a little bit more chunky. And that's looking lovely. This here, folks, is question number 17. I'm just writing in there because it's been chopped off in the enlargement process. Right. Solve 4x minus 1 divided by 5 plus x plus 4 divided by 2 equals 3. It says solve it. Okay, by the time most students get to this, they're ready with the parachute on, ready to jump out the window. Nothing to jump out the window for. We need to, first of all, to solve this. If I got rid of all this, folks, at the bottom, does that question look easy to solve? If I got rid of the fraction at the bottom? Does it look more kind of sensible because we've got a linear equation, 4x minus 1, add x plus 4 equals 3, yeah? yeah? It looks like if you can simplify it and solve it's easy. So, if I... If I get rid of the fraction, it's easy, isn't it? How do we get rid of the fraction? We have a 5 and a 2 on the bottom. You times it. Make them equal. We use the LCM technique. The lowest common multiple of the 5 and the 2. What is the lowest common multiple of 5 and 2? It's 10. What we're going to do now to eliminate the divide by 5 and to eliminate the divide by 2, the fractional part of it, I'm going to multiply each element by 10. And that will get rid of that and make the question easy for us to do. So, alright, I'm going to multiply this first part by 10. I'm going to multiply the second part, this second element, by 10. Um, I'm trying to write it in such a way that it looks kind of natural. Okay, I'm just going to have to squeeze in here a bit. Okay, now, have I finished? I'm missing the ad. One bit left, isn't there? I see you're going to multiply everything by 10. So multiply this element by 10, this element by 10, and also the 3, three by the 10. That's where most people make a mistake in the exam. They forget to multiply that side by 10 as well. That's called keeping the formula balanced and equilibrium. So now let's start doing some cancelling. What was the point of multiplying by 10 to get rid of the? And the? 2. two. So this here, time by 10 divided by 5. What can I do with these two? Opposite. So I can cancel them by dividing them by 5. 5 divided by 5 is? One. 10 divided by 5 is? Two. 2. So that's okay. So now I'm going to cancel this one with that multiplier. So we times in by 10 dividing by 2. So we can simplify. So 2 divided by 2 is? One. And 10 divided by 2 is? One. We are dividing by the bottom number because we know we're going there because we've done the LCM. So now, what can you see at the moment? The 5 has now been cancelled. It's been officially cancelled, gone. So let's rewrite it out now and make it all look nice and lovely. So 2 multiplied by 4x minus 1 plus x plus 4 times by 5. Okay folks, don't feel uh, kind of like oh, some, that's on the left and why that's on the right. It doesn't matter which side's on. Okay? So nothing here. Worry about 3 times by 10. Okay, are we happy with that so far? Okay, what technique did we use in the beginning? To get rid of the fractional part, we found the lowest common multiple of 5 and 2, which was 10, and multiplied everything by 10. First bit, second bit, and third bit. We've cancelled off the bottom parts now by cross cancelling over here, and now we've got this situation. What should we do now? We should now multiply the brackets, collect the like terms, which is simplifying, and solve. Multiply our brackets. Let's go. 2 times by 4x is? 8, 8. 2 times by minus 1 is? Minus 2. Okay, now we have here 5 times by x is? 5x. We have 5 times by plus 4 is? 20. Plus 20. And 3 times by 10 is? 30. 30. Now let's collect like terms. So we have 8x and 5x. 8x and 5x will give us a total of? 13. 13x. Okay, now, we have minus 2 and plus 20, plus that will give us plus 18, and that will give us equals to 30. 30. Now, in order to solve this for x now, we, that's our first action and second action. Opposite of add 18 is? Minus. So what's 30 taken by 18? 12. Okay, what we left over here is? 13. 13. So, 
Let's just copy that. 13 x Now, opposite time by 13 is? Okay, so our final x is x is equal to 12 over 13, which is a which is a proper fraction. Okay? Now, don't get worried folks if you see that. Okay. Don't always expect to get a whole number answer. Most of you look at that answer and think, well, that looks wrong. Oh no, I've never seen that kind of answer before, yeah? 12 over 13 is, no, that is the correct answer. 